Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and this is Crash Course on Maya UV Unwrap version 2011 series, section 4, Mapping Tools. In this video I'm going to be discussing the, some four basic mapping tools that Maya has integrated such as the planner, cylindrical, spherical, and automatic mapping. In addition I'm going to be discussing um, in more in detail about the five main rules of the UV mappings discussed in section 2. So let's get started then. As you can see in this sec uh, in this example, I have three option uh, objects here: cylinder, cube, and sphere. These are default uh, unwraps as well as the UV texture editor and UV checker boards attached to each of them. So I'm going to actually discuss uh, the pros and cons of each of these objects with default mapping, no uh, added objects whatsoever, and show you uh, talk about the five rules with each and every one of them. So. Let's start with the sphere. Okay, as you can see, sphere is looking all right. Minimize distortion generally uh, right here. You also notice that the border edges are pretty well minimized. It maximizes the UV space. There's no overlapping, and everything is contained in the zero one space. The biggest con about a sphere is once you go to the poles, which at the top or the bottom. Uh, you can now obviously some distortion here and it just kind of looks like a mess right around here. And the same goes for the bottom. Reason being is for this picket fence style unwrap that the, uh, that Maya has for these spheres. So as you can see, more examples of the five uh, guidelines. I'm going to hide everything. Next I'm going to go to the cylinder. The cylinder looks nice. Um, some minor distortion but that can easily fix with the tools that I discussed previously. Um, the top and the bottom look very nice. The, uh, the 2D squares for the 3D, uh, for the texture look very uniform. There's no major distortion right there. Now let's talk about the UV space. There is a lot of empty space so I don't think that this is actually maximizing the UV space at the fullest. There's no real overlapping so kudos to that and everything is kept in the zero one space. Now as you notice that this is kind of stretched a little bit so that's a really easy fix. It's like the faces, to have the faces only visible in the uh, 2D space or uh, the texture editor. Right click, UVs, and now you have those UVs selected. Go to the scale tool and just scale it out. And eventually you will have, according to the eye, a nice linear square path right there. So there you go. And I'm going to shift select. And there. Everything's outside that uh, maintain the zero one space is very uniform. However, with that small fix, you'll notice I'm not actually maximizing this space altogether. But I'll discuss that in detail a little bit later. So, with that being said, I want to go to the cube. Uh, we worked at the cube in previous examples. Uh, this is um, one subdivision cubed uh, cube. There's nothing going on. Let's see the distortion. There's no distortion at all whatsoever. Uh, there's some border edges, a little bit tough to work with. That'll actually make things difficult if you want to start on uh, paint textures. As you can see, these seams right here are going to be very difficult and will require a very talented texture artist to make sure that these seams are very flush and un un unseeable, more or less. Um, everything is zero one space. Maximize as best as possible with a single UV shell. And there's no real overlapping. So as you saw there, yeah. Uh, so, we're going to talk about some UV uh, mapping tools. These are located in the polygon section, which is F3 by default. In the uh, menu bar, go to create UVs, planar mapping. I'm going to pop this window out real quick. So, by default, reset your settings real quick. Let's just see what's going to happen, and you'll see, and I'll, well, I'll start explaining. You'll see that as soon as I push it, this looks really nice but backwards, that means it's overlapping. This looks very nice, uh, all contained in zero one one space, there's no overlapping, it's all uh, correct, so there it's not in overlapping whatsoever. However, the sides and the top are just distorted all to crap. Reason being is, what this does is, you can see this little shell right here, this cube, or not this cube, this plane, actually tries to create uh, like a UV map shell, more or less using this plane. So what that means is if I actually select this face, which is on the Z section, uh, Z axis, click on the Z axis, click that, you'll notice that, bam, this looks very nice, there's no distortion, 
There's no overlapping or anything of the sort. However, everything else is still done. Therefore, that concludes that if you actually have um, a face selected and you push apply to any mapping tool whatsoever, it'll automatically uh, do what you uh, with your faces. If that makes any sense whatsoever. You will notice on this side it's actually uh, flipped over, so that means it's actually you know, inverted, so you can actually select on your UVs and scale it in or flip it over, or you can actually just, in short, badam badam. Well, there you go. So that side's fixed. Same goes for a marquee selection, so you notice how the top and the bottom selected. This is on the Y axis, and there you go. So this is virtually unwrapped with one minor flaw. I want to minimize that window. As you start looking around and looking at the uh, unwrap, you'll notice that it doesn't um, work with the control overlapping because everything is overlapped. But everything, that's all distortions minimized, the maximized space, everything's kept in zero one space. So you can see the pros and the cons of that. So that is planar mapping. I'm going to hide everything. Next, I'm going to go to spherical mapping. Now, it seems uh, almost counterintuitive now you think about it that when you go to create cylindrical mapping, no real option to discuss that because it's a sphere, it should give you a nice unwrap. However, if you still go to the top, it is still smudged, uh, swirly, and distorted like a piece of crap. So that, uh, therefore, that means no default unwrap mapping method is going to be able to uh, work with any pseudo advanced geometry. Maybe with the box, maybe with a plane, maybe, but obviously with the sphere and even with the cil uh, cylinder, it's not going to work. So let's um, now that we've seen this, let's uh, go into the UV map uh, text editor and see what's going on. You'll notice that it's just it's out of the zero one space. There is still a lot of distortion. Um, maximize the space. I would say no because it's actually breaking the zero one space uh, rule. And you even have this artifact UV just hanging out there. Now, if you want to know what that is, I want to actually going to move that right there and give you a clear look at the top. That single UV is just that section right there. So it's really iffy on uh, using this for the entire section. However, if you really want to use um, uh, spherical mapping, you don't have to select the entire object. You can just go to the front, select on a section, well, you know what, you know, that'll work, just for examples, and go spherical mapping. And that map all together will actually work a lot better, and you can actually work with this with the planar mapping. Now, if you uh, start looking at the tool itself, you'll see that there's uh, some handles to work with. At first, I want to select on this red handle, and move it in, and if you look at the UV texture editor as I'm moving it, it's starting to scale, trying to fit in the zero one space. Alternatively, there's a green one right here, which you can actually select and scale down to try to get that in the zero one space as well. However, uh, if you're looking closely, um, general observation states that hey, this is not going with rule number one which is minimize distortion so what you may have to do is just select those UVs and actually have to manually fix them. In this case it looks like it might have to be scaled in uh, or out I'm sorry and after it's all uh, squared a little more and just do a uniform scale inside so there you go now you have nice pseudo even checkerboard all the way across to the, uh, to the section uh, selection I had. Then I want to go to faces, select on that face, go back to planar mapping which the options are still open, go on the y axis which is still selected, and now the top is unwrapped. There's very little distortion as you can see it is in the zero one space and that's basically how to unwrap a sphere. The only problem with this method is um, you're going to have a lot of border edges to work with. Um, so you're going to need that texture artist to kind of get that going. But in terms of distortion, virtually irrelevant. So with that being said, let's move on to the cylinder right here. So as I uh, briefly pointed out, uh, the cylinder requires a little bit of unwrapping, but this, uh, this was nice. The base was uh, messed up, and the bottom was okay. However, if you actually do a cylindrical unmap, which uh, the options, like the spherical, very limited project, you're going to get this cluster right here. 
the top is just a swirly cluster and it's not going to work out too well. Same with the bottom. In addition to such, when you go to the UV texture editor, you have that artifact once again in the corner. So once I select that UV, move it, frame the UV, you'll notice just like the sphere, you have that artifact right there. So when to use cylindrical mapping? Well, just like the spherical mapping, you actually don't use uh, cylindrical mapping on the entire object itself. Instead, you're going to use cylindrical mapping on the selected faces, use cylindrical mapping, it's going to give you that. And as you can see, that is nicely unwrapped. Well, it could use a little bit of work, but it's I'm running out of time here. I'm actually over my time. And when I select that, deselect the base. Actually, I want to select everything and deselect the base. Deselect the base. Go to plenty of mapping, and you'll notice that it's all has a better unwrap. The top, there's no distortion. On the main base, there's no distortion. On the bottom, there's no distortion. And all you have to do really is just start rearranging some of the uh, UVs. Like for instance, I will need to scale this down to get to fit in the zero one space. I will need to select this, move out of the way, and scale both of these down to, uh, so they fit in the zero one space. Oh, I said both, not one. Both in the zero one space. And there you go. Everything fits in the zero one space, well, for the most part. Uh, there we go. Now everything fits in the zero one space. I can do some scaling work to maximize the space, but there's uh, very little distortion, and you can kind of see how it's going to work out from there. But however, the seams right here on the edges will require a talented texture artist to make sure that is invisible to the naked eye. So let's briefly go over automatic mapping, which will be very, very brief because of my time constraints. Automatic mapping. We're just going to go to the options. Reset the tools. Automatic mapping will do the best that it can with as many planes as possible. With these options, less distortions or few pieces to make it look as best as possible. Now, actually, you know what? I'm actually going to go to the sphere because that's actually a better automatic mapper. Well, you know what? I might already hit it on accident. So, now that I had the automatic mapping done, you'll actually look at the, uh, the object. There's no distortion whatsoever. Very nice. However, there's a lot of seams, as you can see right here may seem kind of hidden because of the checkerboard, however it is very prominent right there. Reason being is if I actually go to the move shell tool, which is right here, it actually created different shells for different objects. That is because of these planes right here, and if you actually think about it, the automatic mapping tool is using planar mappings to get the uh, desired results. So if I use three planes, apply, you'll notice that the three planes, one, two, three, are being used to make this unwrap. Therefore, if you make 12, you'll notice that 12 planes 12 planes, 1, 2, 3, plus whatever 12, creates an, uh, the unwrap, which generally doesn't look out too well. Um, therefore, if you actually have less distortion, it's going to do what it can to uh, make, you, make the distortion a lot less than uh, general unwrapping, and all that jazz. So that is it for mapping. I'm sorry I went over the time limit. I hope uh, I didn't bore you too much. Uh, next, I'm going to be talking about manipulating the UVs. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.